In this video, we're going to be taking a look at official SteamOS running on one of the smallest Ryzen 9 powered mini PCs on the market. I've been messing around with this for the last couple days and I'm really surprised by the performance here. I've tested a ton of games on it at 1080 and given the form factor here, this is a great performing little setup with SteamOS installed. This is the Geekcom A8, and as you can see, it is absolutely tiny. We took a look at this a few months ago on the channel, but out of the box, this comes with Windows 11 installed on it. And it's a great performer over there, but recently I've been doing a lot of testing with official Steam OS using the Steam Deck recovery image. So I figured we'd test it here, and yeah, this thing is performing really well. As you can see, it's not much bigger than the official Steam controller, and this does come with a vase mount, so you could actually mount this on the back of a monitor, TV, under a desk, on a wall. Basically, with this thing being so small, you can pretty much put it anywhere. And when it comes to these mini PCs, usually I look for one with integrated RAM because it does run much faster, something like LP DDR5X running at 6400 or even 75. But with this setup here, we've got dual channel SODIMM RAM running at 5600 megahertz. And what makes the A8 so powerful is the APU they opted to use here. Now keep in mind, Geekcom is offering two different models. We've got the higher end Ryzen 9 model. And with this, we get the 8945HS. Based on Zen 4, 8 cores, 16 threads, up to 5.2 gigahertz. Built-in Radeon 780M graphics with 12 compute units. It's based on RDNA 3. And it clocks up to 2800 megahertz in this chip. You can add up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. I've got 32 gigs installed here, dual channel, 5600 megahertz, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2 built in, and all of this is working with SteamOS 3.8. This is official. I used the Steam Deck recovery image and updated from there. Real quick, wanted to give you a look at the BIOS because there's one important thing that I changed in here. With the A8 mini PC, we don't have an advanced section, but from main, if we go down just a bit, we do have our performance modes, quiet, normal, performance. This should bring us up to around 64 watts. You're going to get the maximum performance out of this for sure like this. And that's the only thing that I've changed here. Again, really impressed by the performance out of this little mini PC, especially in that performance mode with SteamOS installed. And like I mentioned, this is official SteamOS. So if we go to our settings here, system, OS update channel, I'm on main. Steam Deck Stable, and you can see from here, Steam OS Hollow 3.8, and of course, we've got that Ryzen 9 8945HS because we've got the A8 model here, up to 5.2, real close to 5.3, 8 cores, 16 threads. This unit has 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600. Remember, it's SODIMM RAM and I've got around 11 gigs dedicated to the iGPU. And to tell you the truth, I mean, this thing is putting down way better performance than I thought it would. I've tested a lot of these mini PCs with SteamOS, or rather, Bazai OS. Right now, we've got that official 3.8 installed here, and I'm not exactly sure what Valve has done so far, you know, in terms of optimizing for other chips other than the Steam Deck APU, but uh, whatever they've done here, this is working amazingly. I've got this set to 60 hertz right now. Uh, it is connected to a 120 hertz display just to record through my game capture real quick. VRR and HDR is gonna be supported if you've got it connected to a display that supports it. Manual GPU overclock isn't gonna work out very well. This will do up to 28 or 29, but you can see it only goes up to 16 from here. We're just relying on that performance mode from the BIOS. But with it set up like this, I've been able to play everything that I wanted to at 1080, including Spider-Man 2, which is notoriously hard to run on these iGPUs, especially after the bunk updates that they've been putting out for it. But with this little system here, I mean, it's well over 70 FPS. And we're going to go ahead and jump into one of these. Let's do, let's start out with Cyberpunk. We'll get right into it here. I use my Steam Deck quite a bit, and one thing that kind of bugs me is just the length of time it takes to cache those shaders before you start a game up for the first time. But with this 8945HS, I mean, it just flies right through them. We've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, Steam Deck preset, and with this, it does set FSR to balance. Performance overlay in the top left-hand corner, and remember, from the BIOS, we're in performance mode, so this does go up to around 65 watts here. Not bad at all. We're seeing an average of 73 FPS, and this is without frame gen. If you wanted to enable that, you can get up into the 90s with it. Still looks great. And on these lower end iGPUs, 
I feel that frame gen is something that a lot of people should be utilizing. I know they're fake frames, but on a lower end chip like this, it can really help out. And this is not a $3,000 GPU, so I'd say fake frames are totally fine to be running on something like this. Next up, Borderlands 3 Low Medium Mix 1080p. And if you don't mind taking the resolution scale down a bit to 75%, you could go full medium with it. But I want it 100% scale at 1080, so low medium mix is kind of the way to go with this. Not too bad. Now, every once in a while, you will see a dip, and this is kind of the way it goes with this game, especially when there's a lot of characters on screen and particle effects. I mean, if you've played this game, got a bunch of upgrades, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But given that this is running on a super small form factor PC with an iGPU, I'd say 82 FPS on average isn't bad at all. Doom Eternal is another one I always like to test, and usually on these iGPUs, at lower wattages at least, on the 780M iGPU, we gotta go down to low settings, sometimes even 900p at like 30 watts. But since we can kind of max this out at 65, and even sometimes I've seen a boost over that, we can go to 1080 with a low medium mix, 100% resolution scale. We don't need to use dynamic or take it down using the static setting we have here with Doom Eternal. And we're seeing an average across the board of 94 FPS out of this game. Elden Ring is one that gives these little iGPUs a run for its money, and most of the time we're well under 60 with it. And I'll tell you, it's not perfect like this right now, but we're at 1080 low with this game, and it's hanging at 60 as hard as it can. We got a couple dips here and there. Nothing too major. I mean, I never saw this go under 55 FPS. When it comes to The Witcher 3, I'm usually using the Steam Deck preset, which is basically low settings with dynamic resolution scale set to 60 FPS. It's kind of tied in there. So in order to get up to that 60 on the Steam Deck, it does take the resolution Let's way go. down. But with this, we're at 1080 medium FSR set to balanced, and our average FPS is in the mid 70s with this one. I also wanted to test a fighting game, so I went with Street Fighter 6, and overall these aren't hard games to run on an iGPU, but usually we gotta take the settings down to medium, low, and maybe even go down to 900p. But on this setup here, we're at 1080 high settings, running at a constant 60. Marvel Rivals, 1080, low, with FSR set to balance. You could go down to 900p, do medium settings with it, but even at low, it's still really playable on this system. And we're right there over set, and we're right there at around 72 FPS on average, even during battle. And the final one we have here is Spider-Man 2 at 1080 medium settings with FSR frame gen on. So on an iGPU with this game, and especially with the recent updates from the developers, I have not been seeing great performance. And for the most part, with everything that I've tested on integrated graphics, frame gen is kind of a must if you want to get over that 60 FPS mark anywhere over 900p. And on this system here, yeah, we definitely needed it. And with it set up like this, we're seeing an average of around 73 FPS. So again, I'm not exactly sure what Valve is doing to kind of optimize for other chips, but recently they announced that uh, they will have a beta coming out that will allow you to easily install it on other handhelds, possibly desktops and laptops. Since that announcement, I've been testing it on a bunch of different devices using that main branch, either stable or beta, SteamOS 3.8, and I've had pretty good luck on most devices from Ryzen 5000 up to Ryzen 9000. When it comes to the newer Ryzen AI HX chips, using official SteamOS, I just can't get it to boot, and uh, hopefully that will be updated soon so we can test it on those devices. But right now, I'd say that 8945HS is a really good choice, and there's a ton of different mini PCs on the market that use that chip. And if you could get one that does have LP DDR5X RAM running at 64, maybe even faster, you could see a little better performance out of the iGPU. 
but even with so damn RAM, I'm very impressed by the performance this tiny PC is putting out with SteamOS installed. If you know what you're getting into, something like this can make a really good living room gaming PC using SteamOS. Now, of course, you're not going to be running 1440p or 4K with this chip here. I mean, maybe some older stuff you might be able to get up to 1440p, Left 4 Dead 2, things like that. But at 1080, performance here is great, and it could work out for some people out there. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If there's anything else you want to see running on this mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.